Hey guys, welcome back. So we've got an interesting one for you today. I know everybody loves the snake bite videos. So we've got all conditions in place today for me to get ripped open by a giant snake. So we're gonna find out what happens when we come back on Intrepid Exotics. So I was going to start this weekend off and just do a regular old cleaning video, uh, sit and chat with you guys a little bit while I clean the enclosures, but I had a unique opportunity. Uh, it's not very often that my, uh, that my snakes get on point and get a little punchy and thought this a really good opportunity uh, for a teaching experience here. Now, most people that keep snakes will tell you about the worst thing you can deal with is a reactive male reticulated python. And the one in this tub right here is 15 feet long and about 60 pounds, maybe a little bit more by now. And he was really on point today. So I want to use this as a really good example of how important it is to be able to read your snake's behavior and how to do the right thing uh, to avoid having bad experiences with your animals. So let's go look at a time when we've got one that's a little bit grumpy and a little bit reactive and see how this goes down. Now you're going to see as soon as I start moving this lock, his head jumps up, follows me, even comes up with his mouth open as I'm pulling that lock away. Not quite today. This is kind of coming off to me as just a really strong food response. It's taken him a little while to come out of. Yeah, he's not, not necessarily crumpy. Um, yeah, it does look like he really doesn't feel like being messed with a whole lot today. but. See, this is, this is the thing where it's really easy to turn them from having a food response to being defensive. Um, so it's, it's just where the patience comes in handling these guys. <clears throat> now I'm just keeping the glass between me and him. And watch this. This is what you don't want. He is coming straight out and squaring up with me. That tongue stopped moving. He is beaded down on me like that and you just do not want to leave them in that situation so i just pushed him back a little bit and the whole time he's doing this i'm like okay when are you going to take a strike at me and yeah you just stay really alert for that kind of stuff and he slowly just starts to retreat a little bit and then as soon as he does as soon as that's over with you know i, I leave him alone with the hook now it's just time to handle him and he relaxes and business as usual at this point you know the only thing you really need to do is just really pay attention to how he acts as soon as his head comes out of that enclosure because you know if they are if they are really defensive they really don't want to be messed with they can come back around with that head and come at you you just got to pay attention to that and you'll see how i manage that when i put him back in and now it's just a matter of guiding him into the tub and putting him in there and then getting his enclosure cleaned. So I managed to get him out, get his enclosure clean without incident. Um, now he's sitting back here in the tub behind me. He's been back there for a few minutes, so maybe he's calmed down, maybe he hasn't. But we're going to go ahead and get him put back in the enclosure. I just want to have everything filmed just in case something happens. I actually kind of hope something does because we see entirely too many videos of people talking about their aggressive snakes and how their snakes chasing them around and things like that. Um, you know, these guys aren't aggressive. They're not mean. And we're gonna go ahead and put him back in. Now, I don't know what his demeanor is when I open this up. So this is all gonna be as it's happening. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how we manage this guy and get him back in his enclosure and hopefully we do so without incident. And a couple things you're gonna notice, of course, I've got my hook out. <laughs> And anytime you've got them in a tub, you want to make sure that you're opening the lid towards you. You don't want to pick this thing up like this because if they're really reactive or if they're really defensive and this thing comes up, there's a good chance they can come out and get you. So you always want to back this thing up like this, open it up, and you can see, well, I can see, I'm not entirely sure if you can see them or not. You're gonna find a lot of times when you open the tubs on these guys after they've been in there for a minute that they, uh, you know, they're just curled up, almost quasi sleeping. 
We'll move this thing up so you can kind of see his, see what he's doing down there. At the door right there, maybe we can. So when I first opened up the lid, his head was way up here. Now he's looking like he just really doesn't want to be messed with right now. You know, he's coiling up under himself. We're still gonna, I've got the hook here in between his head and my hand. And he looks like he's chilling out a little bit. He's got a little bit more of a longer tongue flicks than he did before. Um, when I first was getting him out, really short tongue flicks. He actually was holding his tongue there for a second. So but let's not mess around with him. We're just gonna move him around and get him back into his house. And you see how I'm not letting him, you know, turn back towards me. Just kind of turning with him. Comfortable with the direction he's heading. He's not sure he wants to go in. Just tickle him a little bit. You can tell he really doesn't want to be messed with too much today. Tickle that tail, get it in there. So it's really as easy as that. Now that, that whole situation from the onset could have turned into a really gory bite video. I mean, he is a really big, powerful snake. And had I not done the right thing with him, uh, we could be putting up some more of this clickbait snake bite stuff that everybody seems so fond of. But the only reason I'm gonna film anything like this where they're reactive is to be able to show, you know, what kind of body language you need to look for and how you need to how you need to treat it when you see it and if something does go wrong if i do end up getting bit i want to have it on video so that i can look and see and learn what i did wrong and change it so for any of you guys that was waiting to see some big gory snake bite well that's not how you manage them so that's not what happened and it's just really important that everybody understand that you know we're not out here to dramatize and and make these make these animals look mean we're out here to help people understand how they behave and how we can have times like this where you've got a reactive snake who really doesn't want to be messed with and you can still interact with him you can still move him you can still handle him without all the drama without all of the you know fighting and wrestling and getting chased around the house and so forth so there there's certain levels of dangerous snakes you know venomous snakes of course being the highest level um, you know, when you get up to your 20 foot retics and berms and anacondas and things like that, those are going to fall next on the list. Most people will agree that the very next one on the list down is a reactive male reticulated python because these guys can really, really be hyper. And if you do the wrong things with them, you can really make a bad experience happen. So that's why it's really important. To you know, go back and watch this as many times as you need to. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a point of focusing on, um, you know, focusing on the individual body languages that I'd seen, and explaining how I managed it. Because if you're gonna have these guys, sometimes you've got to interact with them. Sometimes you've got to move them when they don't want to be handled, and you really got to know how to read them right. So I guess the moral of the story here is that when we're interacting with these animals the experiences are going to be as good or as bad as we make them. You know, when we come up and we, we start seeing those signs, just got to back off. And it's just like I talked about in another video. You've got to have that balance between caution and confidence. You know, as you can see, you know, as soon as I got him not locked on to me anymore and got him moving away, you know, I was using the hook the whole time just as a barrier wasn't poking him with it it was just sitting there up against him just until he started to back off a little bit once he started to turn the hook goes down on the floor and you pick him up as a reactive 15 foot male reticulated python and you're handling them and you really can't do much with the hook at that point so no matter what state of mind they're in you've still got to handle them properly and 
you know, you've got to be able to have your hands on them. So there's that. You know, again, like we talk about, you know, you've got to be able to trust your animal and trust the process for them to trust you and not take your hand off. So, so I hope you guys got something out of this. Like I said, it was a little bit of a unique, uh, unique day here. Most of the time, these guys are just really, they snap out of it really quick. They're really easy to manage. Um, and since he was so on point, I wanted to make a, take that opportunity to kind of show you guys what to look for and how we work with it. So again, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, get notified when new stuff comes out. Anytime anything out of the ordinary happens here, I'm going to do my best to have it on camera so we can talk about it. And um, I mean, you guys have an outstanding day and I will see you next time on Intrepid Exotics.